22.64 degrees. Local time is 23.45.12 GST. All systems nominal. Formation Look. change to mm. V-form. Uh, welcome to Rust Heart. I finally remembered to grab a star mate, which I always like having, but I honestly just forget to include them. Uh, so I remembered to do that this time, uh, thanks to, um, I think it was Thomas Olson who uh, suggested I do that to make things a little easier. This is definitely needed on this particular campaign mission as you only fight four enemies, which are trying to destroy this convoy. You are protecting this convoy. I love that render distance. It's supposed to be fog, but it just looks like a... It just looks like a, a really short render distance in this... in these graphics. So you, you uh, play as a fat little warhammer. Uh, so you're pretty slow. So having a fast star mate always helps. All points attacking your target. I would have grabbed two star mates, which is the maximum in this game, but you can only have one on this mission. Canonically, you can have up to five, but it's already really straining this game's uh, 1995 engine just to have more than a, a couple mechs on screen at a given time. All points attacking your target. Yeah, the convoy's already getting away from me, so I gotta catch up and uh, keep them from getting blowed up. Enemy mech destroyed. Point two. Reports target destroyed. Enemy power up detected. All points attacking your target. Yeah, unfortunately, dealing with those enemies generally pulls you away from the convoy. And the other enemies are way on the opposite side, and it's always a bit of a close call. Okay, gotta draw in that marauder. Okay, please. Okay, it's just an arm. Good, I distracted him. Sometimes that marauder will just go after the convoy regardless, and that's pretty much an instant game over. Kind of a neat little visual, watching the two storm crows duke it out. There's not much to say about this mission. There aren't any bonus objectives. They're not really uh, anything more than these four enemies. As far as I know, there are no Easter eggs. Uh, just giant cool ki uh, crystal and things, which I like quite a bit, but that's kind of it. Unfortunately, I think uh, while I enjoy the Jade Falcons more than any other clan, just honestly, because as a little kid I love the color green, the Jade Falcons are green, so of course I love the green guys. Uh, but unfortunately, it seems that the developers loved Clan Wolf a lot more, so their missions tend to be a lot more interesting. Jade Falcons generally allowed to defend and attack one thing and run away. Uh, besides, the Clan Wolf side gets the Tarantula. You don't get to play as it without using cheat codes, but uh, hey, everyone loves a quad mech. 
Uh, the Jade Falcons do get their own unique mech, which I believe will appear in the next one. I don't recall, uh, recall the exact order. But we shall see. Um, I believe they're next. Oh, and I guess Clan Wolf actually gets their the uh, and the elemental, um, which is not a mech but a suit of armor, sort of like power armor. If you're more familiar with, I don't know, Warhammer or Halo or something like that, it's kind of like that. Um, it's pretty much the only way infantry can really be threatening to mechs. I know certain writers like, um, who was it that wrote Decision at Thunder Rift? Um, William, William H. Keith, that's him. Uh, he made infantry really deadly to mechs just because they're so hard for the mechs to target, but in these games, uh, like MechWarrior 3 and, and such, infantry are just a joke. I don't believe any infantry in MechWarrior 3 have guns, but it's just fun to step on them. It's one thing that bummed me out about MechWarrior 4. MechWarrior 4 is generally a, a, technically a backstep from MechWarrior 3. Uh, all the infantry go from actual models you can interact with to uh, just little sprites. You can't even step on them or kill them or shoot them. Just kind of a bu uh, bummer. It's just... Yeah. I like my bloody explosions when I step on